I really didn't want to stay uh, in Iran and do the same thing and the rest of them that are doing. I really wanted to challenge myself, yeah, to go somewhere. And all I was looking for is a place that I could, I don't know, study and live. At the time, the first place I, when I left Iran, I was just after the army and after the revolution in Iran, okay? I was in the army for two years. I left Iran and I went it's to Sweden with uh, my best friend. And um, I went, okay, during the summer I would work uh, to make enough money for the whole year to keep me going. We say, and I'm not exaggerating, um, I would work two shifts in a factory and one shift in a restaurant. The reason I was going to do the restaurant was that at least I could get the food for, you know, fast and food for nothing, really, okay. And the two shifts, the only sleep I would get for the whole week, it was an hour in between the, traveling between the two jobs. Again, it's a long story, I don't want to bore you with it, but basically I had a brother who died and we all had all these dreams. He was talking about all these faraway places we were going to go with it. It was Greenland, Alaska, Ireland, yeah. So it was just place away from everybody else. So when I was in Sweden, I met this Irish girl, yeah. And at the time she asked me to come over here and all that. So I came here for a very short holiday for two weeks and go back. But as it happens, uh, and I know everybody come up with that excuse, but I honestly, genuinely lost my passport. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to do anything, just anyhow. So, I, uh, then I ended up, I couldn't go back home because we had a revolution. They wouldn't know whether I was a member of the dream. Couldn't back go to Sweden because I had no passport. So I stuck here, yeah. And I had um, really very little money, uh, almost no English or anything like that. So I ended up um, in, um, believe it or not, in Berna, uh, not far away where the shop is, um, in this house which was overlooking the bay. So you could see the boats coming and going, yeah. And um, again, as I say, I really had very little money and no language. So I decided to go get books from Heinz Building, children's books, and come and I asked my family to send me a dictionary. Um, and then I started kind of, because there was no place to learn any English or anything like that. Then I started learning English. And then, as I say, I could see the boats coming and going. Um, and I went, um, I made up the sentence, I looked at the whole thing. Um, for years, the, the fishermen, they were slagging me because I was looking for the captain rather than the skipper. Well, that was the thing. So um, then I got the job in there uh, with the, one of the boats and I started fishing with the lads from Connemara, which uh, again, that's where I learned my, most of my English. So I had the problem even with the accent. I used to talk like that, like the Connemara people. And then I had to go and get a elocution lesson to sort it all out. Yeah. I'm joking, yeah, Connemara people. I love Connemara people. They're the best in the world. But to be honest, you, again, that's what I say, where I learned the English, yeah. So it just accent was something else. Something else. <laughs> and everybody fished with me, they know. I fished for two years. But every single day that I went out, I was seasick. I never got used to it. And then as regards as the business, it just, it was one of the way you could stay in the country. Number one, if you had a profession that was so good, they needed it, brain surgeon or something. Or number two, you would be a student, which I didn't have the money at the time. Were, because I remember I had to pay 5,000 pounds a year. So I didn't have. Or the third thing was to start your own business. To start your own business, it was a really no big definition. All it meant, I bought a trailer and I start uh, selling fish around, okay? You start selling prawns, selling it to local market, and then bit by bit, it really um, was a very good export market in it. Before I knew it, it was about 30, 40 people working around me. We, had, we wouldn't close the factory. We had a factory there, wouldn't close it day and night. Uh, when Nushin, my daughter, came back from Australia, honest to God, um, is, I know every father would say that, but it really was shot in the arm. It was fantastic because um, 
I just, you know the, yourself, sometimes you, have to, you want to have a purpose, yeah? yeah. Suddenly it was um, somebody who said, okay, dad, I do something with you, yeah? And she came, basically took over the place. And um, for a start, uh, I kind of wanted to put my nose in, but then to be honest, you'll be realistic. I just pulled back. I mean, she was doing a job 100 times better than I would possibly have done. 